Hey, what's up guys, Mike Red Fox. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to pick the best mining pool for you. So we're gonna use Ethereum as our example in this video because that's what everybody's mining right now. And maybe you're coming off nice hash, just getting started mining, or maybe you're just looking to switch to a different mining pool in this video. My goal is to not tell you what pool to use, but to just arm you with information and knowledge so that you can make the best decision for yourself because your situation is different than my situation. So you just need to look at the information and decide for yourself what the best route to go is. And so at the end of the video, if that's what I accomplished, then I feel really good about it. And we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about tools and resources that you can use, knowledge that you can gain, and I'll help define some of the terms that pools use and just look at some of the factors that you may want to consider when determining what mining pool to use again in this case for ethereum so let's start with one of those resources and that resource is miningpoolstats.stream this is a favorite website amongst cryptocurrency miners and right now we're going to click on ethereum and we're going to take a look at all the ethereum mining pools this is it here they're sorted by the amount of hash rate that is on their pool you can see Spark pool, for example, has 155 terahash out of the total net hash on Ethereum, 662 terahash. So you can get a quick at a glance look at all the mining pools that are out there, what mega hash, uh, in this case, terahash they have on them when they found their last block, et cetera. There's a lot of info on here and you can explore this on your own. Now, one of the things I wanna cover first because it's usually the most confusing thing and I wanna make you not worry about it is pools payment methods and what you see that might be confusing is this in the case of spark pool pps plus and in the case of ethermine you see pplns pps stands for pay per share and pplns stands for pay per last n share and so to explain this i want to use an analogy and hopefully this doesn't make it too simplistic but i think it's one of the best ways that i can think about it and we're going to use the analogy of a bank all right, and we're gonna start with PPS, pay per share. In this analogy, you show up at the bank, you walk up to the teller counter, and you give over a ticket. And this bank has a vault, just like every other bank, and it's full of money. You walk up and you hand over your ticket, and that is your GPU providing a share to the pool. And every time you hand your ticket to the teller, they give you money. You hand your ticket, they give you money. They, you hand your ticket, they give you money. Ticket, money, ticket, money, ticket, money, right? They're taking it out of their vault and they're giving it to you. And that's it. That's how it works. Now, in a PPLNS version of a pool, it works a little bit differently. Their vault is empty right now and you show up, right? And you got all these tickets and you give your ticket to the teller, you get no money. Teller just takes your ticket, puts it aside. Ticket, puts it aside. Ticket, puts it aside. Then eventually the truck shows up with all the money. And this is the pool finding a block. And all that money goes into the vault. And then the teller looks at all the tickets that they got from you and pays you based on all of that work that was done, all the tickets that were provided to that teller proportionally versus everybody else, right? And that is the pool finding a block and then you getting paid for the amount of work that you put in going back retroactively. And that's how these work. So if you look at them at a glance, a PPS pool, you're not waiting for the pool to hit a block. It doesn't matter. The pool is taking that risk. They're just going to keep paying you no matter what. PPL and S, you are waiting for the pool to find a block. You're also looking at that pool's luck score. Now, in a big pool like Ethereum, uh, Ethermine, and many of the others, like it's just going to quickly average out to 100% luck over time. But maybe the pool doesn't find a block for a while. It means that your shares are just piling up. Maybe the pool gets really lucky. That means you're making more than you would have on a PPS pool. There's one other thing, we're not gonna get too in the weeds with it, but you'll see it's called PPS Plus. That's what Spark Pool has. If you see a pool, and what we could probably find one, so let's take a look. If you see a pool that just is PPS, like Hash City here, at least according to this, it's just PPS. What that means is you're only getting the block. You're not getting any of the fees included in that block. Whereas in a PPS plus pool, like Spark Pool up here, you're getting the block and the fees just like you are in a PPLNS pool. 
And not to get too complex here, but the way the fees work is exactly the same way as PPLNS works. So while the block is just ticket paid, ticket paid, ticket paid, the fees are based off of the amount of shares and the amount of tickets accumulated over time. That can get really confusing really fast. So I hope my analogy of the bank works for you. But ultimately what I would suggest thinking about, especially with a coin like Ethereum, is just stick to a pool. And over time, it really shouldn't matter. You're gonna get the same amount of payouts on either pool as long as you're not hopping between them. That's where things can get, not dangerous, but that's where things can get less profitable if you're like switching pools every hour, every day. Just pick a pool, stick with it. And the way you pick a pool and stick with it is looking at a lot of other factors and features that they provide. And there's a few, and I'm gonna start with at least the one that's most important to me because it's the one I'm most passionate about. And that is minimum payout threshold. So Mike, what is minimum payout threshold? That is me being able to configure and customize what my pool balance has to hit before the mining pool pays me out. Some pools allow you to do that, others don't. Why might that be important? If you're a smaller miner, it might not matter. You're getting paid out when you hit the pool's predetermined minimum payout threshold. I'll give you an example here. Let's switch back over. Hyvon has, here it is, a minimum payout of 0.1 ETH, and you cannot change it. So every time you hit 0.1 ETH that day, the pool will pay you out 0.1 ETH. You cannot change that. Over on Ethermine, you can change what your minimum payout threshold is. So I can raise that, for example, to 0.5 Ethereum, and the pool will pay me out when I hit 0.5 Ethereum. Why is this important? If you're getting into like giga hash territory, you don't want all these transactions constantly hitting your wallet because what does that mean? That means at least here in the US and anywhere else you gotta track this stuff for taxes, that is a lot of transactions to report and account for when doing your taxes. And I made that mistake my first year in mining and then I learned how important it was to be able to set a minimum payout threshold. So for me, I set my minimum payout threshold to what I want it to be. So I get paid out maybe once a week. And that's 52 transactions that I have to track throughout the year. And maybe not thousands of transactions I have to track throughout the year. So that is really important for me. And not every pool, as we see with Ethermine and Hyvon, allows you to set that. So I wanted to cover that one first. But there are certainly other things that we should talk about here. Going back to mining pool stats slash stream, one of the next things you're going to see is the pool fee, right? And this is the pool getting paid for the service it's providing you, right? They're going to charge a fee. They should charge a fee. They're giving you a great service, but the fees differ from each pool. As you see the two biggest ones, Sparkpool and Ethermine, both charge 1%. So of the hash that you're putting in or the rewards that you would get, they're, they're taking 1% of that to pay for their servers and do all the things and, and Honestly, probably make some money too, right? They should, like I said. And you can see F2 pool charges 2%. And they might get a little confused because you go down to Hyvon and they charge 0%. And this is where you should dive into this a little bit more. If you go to Hyvon, right, they pay 0% pool fee. And we'll get into transaction fees in a second. But that's because, right, they bundle their Hyvon pool with their Hive OS operating system. And you can see to use, once you hit a certain amount of workers, want to use their OS and to use their pool, they're gonna charge you a 3% fee. So again, but like great services, amazing mining operating system, amazing pool, but they're just gonna charge you 3% to do it all. That's what they decide to do. So that's the next thing you should look at, pool fee, right? Don't go pay, don't go mine on some pool that's got like a 10% fee, that would be, that would be insane. Um, along with that are transaction fees, right? This is the second kind of fees that you're going to get hit with. And this is especially true in a post EIP 1559 world. And you'll see again on Hive OS or Hive on pool, they cover the transaction fee, but again, they're also charging you 3%. Where on Ethermine, if you go back there, you have to pay the transaction fee post EIP 1559. But you can set what you want that fee to be. And let me talk about that a little bit more here. So I can hit my minimum payout threshold of say 0.5 Ethereum, and I will not get paid out until the base fee on the Ethereum network hits the amount of GUE that I set it to. And I use 40, 40 GUE again, hold strong. 
So I use 40. So until the base fee on the Ethereum network hits 40, that 0.5 Ethereum will not get paid out to me. So I get to decide. And that's I think that's great. Other pools do different things. And you should look into what the pool you're considering using does as far as transaction fees. Now, one of the cool things that I discovered just recently that is very important, uh, of course, there's a tool I'm going to go over in a second, but you should also really be looking at your ping and your latency to the pool server. So let's take a look at Ethereum, uh, Ethermine. So we we'll look at Ethermine, we we'll go to start mining. Here, you can see they offer four mining servers and I'm in the East US. So this is great for me, right? They got a East US mining server and I want to make sure that I got a server close to me so I have a low latency and a low ping. Why is that important? That's important that I don't produce stale shares because especially depending on the pool, stale shares may not get paid for. They may not be counted. Some pools don't count them at all. Other pools count them 100% and some pools count them somewhere in the middle where you only may get 50% of those shares counted uh, towards your total shares. So the way you prevent stale shares is to have great network connectivity with the pool. So in this case, Ethermine's got uh, a US East server. If we go over to Spark Pool, what do they have? They have a US server. If we go over to Two Miners, another favorite pool, they have a US server. Um, and I know that Hivon uh, definitely has a, a couple US servers as well. So the tool that I found is from Two Miners, and I'll link to it in the description below. And it is a ping tool for the Stratum. And so I actually set it up and we're gonna test it live right now. And I chose the servers in the US that should be closest to my physical location here in the East US. And we're gonna run them and see which one is actually closest to me. So we got two miners going, we got Ethermine going, and let's do Spark Pool. And let's see what kind of results we get here. All right, so two miners finish. And you can see our ping time is pretty low. We're below 20 on most of those pings, if not low 20s. If we go over to Ethermine, the actual pool that I do use using their East US server, I should have a higher ping. I'm in the 30s, which to me means that that US server that two miners is using is closer to my physical mining rigs location than the one that Ethermine is using. If we go over to Spark Pool, uh, you can save a much higher ping in the 70s and in the 80s. So what all of that really means at a glance is that the lower the ping, the better connection you're going to have to that pool and the less chance that you're going to have for submitting stale shares that may or may not be counted in the total shares you submit when the pool finds a block or in the case of PPS plus uh, gets a transaction fee. Okay, I think that's almost everything that I wanted to talk about. There's one other tool that I would recommend and that is over on etherchain.org and I'll leave a link to this in the description below as well. And I've been tracking on this website for pretty much every week post EIP 1559. And what you're looking at here is the average reward that the pool is paying out, that the pool is hitting. And you can see Ethermine here coming up at 2.14 Ethereum. And I'll pause there and say, I actually reached out um, to these guys to see, I haven't heard back yet, but like, I can't find anywhere that tells me what time period this is. Is this a 24 hour is what I heard, but is it a week? I'm not really sure. So that really would skew like the data for how often I might look at this. But I will tell you that almost every time I look at this, which is a few times a week, Ethermine is coming up number one. In this case, Spark Pool is a little bit more. But every time I look at this, Ethermine is beating Hivon every single time. I don't know what that means. I don't know if there's more to the story and all of that. But I just think this is a cool tool to come check, maybe look at weekly that may help you decide what pool is paying a little bit more. So I think that's it guys. That's everything that I wanted to cover uh, in this video around choosing the best mining pool for you. I'm sure that I missed something. Please let me know in the comment section down below. But at least for me, off the top of my head, those are the big things that I personally look at. I would love to know what mining pools you are using for Ethereum and why. Leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know. I'm very curious. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Subscribe for more content on GPU mining. Join my Discord if you want to chat. Link is in the description below. And as always, please take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next video.